Nowadays, bicycle speedometers, either the wired models such as this or wireless models, are both inexpensive and widespread, but that doesn't mean they are not magical. The head unit typically displays time, distance, speed and trip averages, but how does the head unit know all of this from just a single wire, or in case of a wireless, from just a single sensor? In this video I'm going to explain just that. Let's start with the hardware. You need to have a look-see on this hardware. Information display typically, zero is the speed. There's a navigator here that says that's the total distance on this uh, speedometer unit. It does measure, measure temperature as well. There's a clock, tip, trip distance, ride time. So they're fairly straightforward information. You can have a split distance here, section time and section distance. That's how it's labeled on this particular model. What's important is that on the back side of the head unit there are two electrical contact points. These are spring loaded. They can be depressed into the head unit. Let me just try to show you this. So with your nail, if you have a hard enough nail, there you can see that they are spring loaded. The spring loaded electrical contact points make contact with these two pick up points here on the cradle. This is the cradle and the single piece of wire is actually two pieces of wires inside the jacketing of this cable here and it splits to both of these uh, signal pick up points here. So electrical contact here is fairly important and it needs to be solid. This wire in this case in this wired model is wound around the cables there and comes down and terminates in this sensor here. The sensor is typically mounted on the front fork somewhere on the bicycle. A single magnet is mounted on one of the spokes and that includes or that involves all the hardware there is to it. So a magnet, a sensor, a wire and a head unit that knows your speed. But how? Let me explain this using the same hardware here. Different model, the head unit, a cradle here with two electric pickup points, the sensor, and for magnet I'm going to use this one from the whiteboard. And I also have an industrial version of the same speedometer. In this case, here is the, this is how the sensor looks like, and that's the magnet inside a pulley. And it's known as a proximity sensor in industrial applications. So whether this wheel is rotating, this proximity sensor can confirm it. Same idea with a rotating magnet that's mounted on one of the spokes on the bicycle's wheel. You get the idea. They can be, these sensors can be inexpensive. This whole hardware is fairly inexpensive, typically under $30. But the industrial sensors, if it's maybe the proximity of uh, verifying if a door on, I don't know, a space station is closed, uh, the sensor might be a thousand dollar sensor, just the sensor itself. So here it's inexpensive. Back to the story, how does the magnet and the sensor and the wire and this cradle generate or result in speed. So this is a different model but you can see the same menu item, trip distance, trip time, average speed, whatever, same stuff. So, first off, this is a proximity sensor. Inside is a coil of wire. The wire has to be made, this is where the ten dollar version or the thousand, this is not a thousand dollar sensor but where the price difference comes from is that inside this is a coil of wire which has to be made of sometimes exotic metals. The point of using expensive special metals is that because the magnetic field from the magnet needs to be close enough in the proximity of the sensor to generate a signal. This signal is a very weak voltage that travels in the wires here up to the cradle. The magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field that moves in the proximity of this sensor generates this voltage by moving some of the electrons, being able to rip away some of the electrons of an exotic metal that's coiled up inside 
so that those electrons actually travel up the wire into the cradle to those pickup points. So in order for this to happen the coil needs to be of good quality and the magnet needs to be strong enough and the distance between the two of them and the alignment between the two of them is kinda critical. So all you get from a sensor, there's no moving components inside the sensor and there's nothing else inside the sensor. The coil of wire is wound around nothing, sometimes air, but sometimes there is an iron core such as a piece of nail in a very cheap sensor and the and that ion core amplifies or magnifies the signal strength and makes more of the electrons move along the wire. So all you get from the sensor and the magnet's interaction is a very weak voltage that makes it to these two terminals. And these two points, the head unit with good electrical contact, very important, picks up this voltage signal. What does it do with voltage? How does voltage become speed? very straightforward. Inside the head unit, I can show you also on this one, you can go into the menu and there is a, in the settings, there is a wheel size, there, one of the bikes, sure, menu are set, there, there's my wheel size, 2196 millimeters on this bicycle that you saw. What the you can adjust the digits there and we're all set so what the head unit does with this wheel size is this is basically an addition machine a very simple calculator that adds I hope that makes sense so every time a voltage signal comes in a voltage peak or a pulsating voltage signal comes in it adds this signal that comes in needs to be amplified because it's so weak it's in the millivolt range. That's why the head unit needs a big battery and if this is wireless then the sensor needs a battery in order to transmit this pulsating one voltage signal that comes into the head unit. So once the voltage peak is registered in the head unit then this head unit just adds numbers. In this case 2196 when the wheel turns around once and it and the head unit doesn't know what size the wheel has. A head unit doesn't know if it's even mounted on a bicycle. If I put this unit on its cradle and just use the magnet you will see that some speed number is going to be displayed here. There. 12 kilometers an hour. It's set to kilometers an hour. There. Now we're doing 25 or, you know, 31 all of a sudden. So you get the idea. The head unit has no idea whatsoever if the sensor is mounted on a wheel at all. The head unit does addition. So, whatever is programmed into it in uh, this sensor, in this head unit's case, 2196 repeatedly is being added to display distance. In the meanwhile, a stopwatch is being started in it. The stopwatch also works as a clock, and what it does with the distance information that it's calculating by adding the preset number repeatedly adding and adding and adding as the magnet moves at every rotation of the wheel it does a division distance divided by time equals speed does this division and displays a best estimate or a, you know it's rounded to just one decimal place for speed amount so it does two things timekeeping distance adding okay how is that do you think it does two math things so it has timekeeping function and distance adding and a division to calculate speed so those are the two math functions that it does it's basically an addition machine and the division machine that's all it can do it's a very very basic simple calculator so that's how the head unit knows what speed the bicycle is traveling at this is known as 
a proximity sensor in industrial applications it's not necessarily known as a speed sensor but either which way it works and in industrial literature and catalogs you can see different names to this here is a magnetic pickup and uh, it's being used to detect gear speed or cam and you can see the voltage signal here being specified how far apart depending on the shape of uh, object the sensor is being placed in the proximity of the voltage signal has different profile in terms of how much time is between the voltage uh, peaks so so this is just some other names for the speed sensor proximity sensor same thing so that's how the bicycle speedometer works that's how the head unit knows what speed you're doing and it's widely used elsewhere in industrial applications